the dollarization fails, Chinese companies abandon renminbi, cling to US dollar. Tesla China layoffs, some departments may cut up to 50%. Under US pressure, Mexico reportedly refuses incentives for Chinese EV manufacturers. US lawmakers focus on protecting Xinyun from CCP attacks. It's all covered in today's China Truths. The dollarization fails, Chinese companies abandon renminbi, cling to US dollar. In a global shift towards diversifying beyond exclusive dependence on the US dollar, the Chinese Communist Party has been actively trying to boost the yuan's influence. However, the paradox is that Chinese companies themselves are now skeptical about the yuan, choosing instead to maintain their assets in dollars. The People's Bank of China has tracked a noticeable rise in foreign exchange deposits, from $778.9 billion in late 2020 to $832.6 billion by March 2023. This uptick signals a growing hesitance among Chinese businesses to convert their foreign revenues into yuan, which has depreciated nearly 2% against the dollar this year, hitting a five-month low. Compounding this trend, the allure of higher interest rates on dollar deposits, which can reach as high as 6% abroad, compared to a meager 1.5% for yuan deposits domestically, has prompted Chinese exporters to postpone converting their earnings, aiming to maximize returns on their foreign holdings. These dynamics reflect the challenges that the yuan faces in a global financial system dominated by the dollar, which continues to strengthen against major currencies like the yen and rupee. This strength underscores the dollar's role as the primary reserve and trading currency worldwide. The dollar's robust position is advantageous for the U.S., allowing it to continue offering efficient, affordable financing for its policies and programs. The dollar's global confidence was highlighted when the DXY index, which tracks the dollar against a basket of other major currencies, ticked up to 106.36 on April 17, a testament to its enduring appeal in turbulent times. Despite the Chinese government's efforts to bolster the yuan to counter the dollar's prestige, the yuan has dropped to a historic low of 7.24 against the dollar. Additionally, recent IMF data bolsters the narrative of the dollar's dominance, revealing its stake in nearly 60% of global foreign exchange reserves as of the end of March 2023. This dominance is further affirmed by ING Bank's analysis, showing a slight uptick in the dollar's global reserve share this year while the yuan continues to see a decline, marking its second consecutive year of reduced presence. China dumps more U.S. debt as foreign holdings hit record high. According to new data from the Treasury Department, foreign holdings of U.S. debt reached a record high of $7.965 trillion in February, marking the fifth consecutive monthly increase. Despite this overall rise, China reduced its holdings to a 14-year low of $775 billion, a decrease of about $23 billion and nearly 9% from the previous year. This move is part of China's ongoing strategy to diversify its investments and support its own currency, the yuan renminbi, amid challenges. Meanwhile, the U.S. continues to issue substantial amounts of treasury bills and notes, projecting to auction approximately $1 trillion in debt from January to June, in efforts to manage a growing budget deficit and escalating interest payments. The demand for these treasuries has seen mixed responses from both domestic and international investors this month. Various experts, including economists, business leaders, and policymakers, have expressed concerns over the U.S.'s fiscal trajectory, warning that it may be unsustainable. Tesla China layoffs, some departments may cut up to 50%. As previously reported, on April 15, Tesla announced a 10% global reduction in its workforce. However, the cuts at Tesla China are significantly deeper in reality. An insider told Phoenix Network Technology that layoffs at Tesla China far exceed the global average of 10%, particularly affecting the sales team with severance packages from N plus 1 to N plus 3. Some departments are reducing staff by 30% to 40%, and in extreme cases, up to 50%, while most others are cutting around 20%. The N plus 3 severance package applies when terminations are finalized on the same day. The severance package at Tesla, 
denoted as N, compensates employees with one month's salary for each year worked. Employees with 6 to 12 months of service are considered to have worked a full year, while those with less than 6 months receive half a month's salary. An additional plus one bonus is given either as a 30-day notice or as an extra month's salary for immediate termination. The N plus 3 plan further adds three months average salary based on tenure. By April 16, Tesla had informed various departments within its Chinese sales operations about the layoffs, with some departments already implementing a 20% staff reduction. Layoff details and the N plus 3 compensation standard were communicated to all stores, significantly affecting their operations. The layoffs extended to Tesla's Shanghai factory, where employees received formal notices and have since formed WeChat groups to discuss the implications and their severance terms. Tesla has remained tight-lipped about the precise reasons for the layoffs. Industry speculation suggests they are likely due to adjustments in market demand and a strategic optimization of production capabilities. Meanwhile, the competition in China's electric vehicle market continues to intensify. Under U.S. pressure, Mexico reportedly refuses incentives for Chinese EV manufacturers. According to Reuters, under U.S. pressure, Mexico's federal government has declined to provide incentives such as cheap public land or tax breaks to encourage investments in electric vehicle production, thus keeping Chinese car manufacturers at arm's length. Three informed Mexican officials disclosed this. They mentioned that the most recent dialogue between top Mexican officials and Chinese car manufacturers occurred in January with executives from BYD Company. During this meeting, Mexican officials clearly stated that they would not extend the same incentives previously available to automakers and would halt any further meetings with Chinese manufacturers. Mexico ranks as the second largest economy in Latin America. Currently, about 20 Chinese car manufacturers are marketing their vehicles in Mexico, yet none have established manufacturing facilities. Chinese vehicles make up about one-third of Mexico's total car brand sales. A spokesperson from the White House stated that President Biden would prevent Chinese manufactured cars from overwhelming the market and threatening national security. The sources attributed this stance to pressure from the U.S. government, especially from the United States Trade Representative, USTR, who insists that Chinese carmakers should not be allowed into the free trade area formed under the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. Shutting the back door U.S. officials have clarified that the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, USMCA, or the new NAFTA, is not designed to allow China and other countries tariff-free backdoor access to the U.S. market, especially in sectors like automobiles, steel, and aluminum. In light of this, White House announced in a statement on April 17 that President Biden has proposed doubling tariffs on steel and aluminum imports from China. During a speech at the United Steelworkers headquarters in Pittsburgh, President Biden addressed the issue of Chinese steel and aluminum being imported into the U.S. through Mexico to circumvent tariffs. He revealed that he had sent a delegation to Mexico to collaborate on resolving this issue. Further, Biden has instructed a senior team to work with Mexico to prevent Chinese steel and aluminum from entering the U.S. via Mexico without facing tariffs. The U.S. Trade Representative's office is also investigating China's unfair trade practices in industries like shipbuilding and logistics. At an Ohio rally in March, former President Trump criticized the Chinese Communist Party's efforts to export cars to the U.S. through Mexico and promised to implement new tariffs to block these imports if re-elected. He said, We're going to put a 100% tariff on every car that comes across the lot. Reflecting widespread concerns in the U.S. auto industry and among politicians, Trump suggested a severe tariff strategy against Chinese manufacturers like BYD and Geely, who may use Mexico as a pathway to introduce cheaper electric vehicles into the U.S. market. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai emphasized the need for decisive action to protect the U.S. electric vehicle industry from competition subsidized by the Chinese government. Last month, Republican Senator Marco Rubio proposed legislation to raise tariffs on Chinese car imports, followed by three Democratic senators advocating for increased tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. 
Chinese automakers can circumvent these tariffs by manufacturing in Mexico, adhering to local content rules requiring at least 75% of core auto parts to originate from North America. Peter Sand from Zenita highlighted that many goods shipped to Mexico likely continue by truck to the U.S., suggesting attempts to avoid U.S. tariffs. Despite skepticism about BYD's claim that their Mexican plants will only serve local markets, the firm is pursuing less substantial state incentives after federal support has waned. Mexican states like Durango and Nuevo Leon are competing to attract Chinese manufacturers, offering various incentives, including a significant package approved for a Tesla factory. Francisco Bautista of Ernst & Young, one of the big four accounting firms, noted that while federal incentives have decreased, significant investors like Audi can still access some benefits. High-level discussions between Mexican and U.S. officials have repeatedly addressed the presence of Chinese EV manufacturers in Mexico, reflecting ongoing U.S. concerns. With the USMCA set for renegotiation in 2026, Mexican officials worry that the U.S. might demand substantial changes to the agreement under the Sunset Clause, which could harm Mexico's interests. U.S. lawmakers focus on protecting Xinyun from CCP attacks. This Wednesday, April 17, the U.S. Congress scrutinized the Chinese Communist Party's covert operations against America, highlighting its efforts to suppress the Xinyun performing arts from the U.S. Democrat Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton from Washington, D.C. highlighted recent hoax bomb threats against Xinyun, which is based in New York and portrays China before communism. For nearly 20 years, Xinyun has been in Beijing's crosshairs. Norton referred to threatening emails the CCP sent to theater executives, warning of mass shootings and bombings should they proceed with Xinyun shows. The tires of Xinyun's tour buses have also been repeatedly vandalized. Though the bomb and shooting threats prove false, the tire damage could have led to catastrophic blowouts during transit. At the hearing, Norton asked Peter Mattis, chairman of the Jamestown Foundation, what can the U.S. do to protect such groups? Mattis emphasized that the U.S. needs to proactively investigate these offenses. He explained, these must be prioritized by our investigative agencies, not just by local police but also by federal law enforcement using their resources. These are unequivocally criminal activities by a foreign government on our soil against our citizens. This issue should be a top priority in our dealings with Beijing, not something to be dismissed or quietly shelved for later discussion. Republican Rep. Michael Cloud from Texas commented that the harassment of Xinyun is just a slice of China's broader strategy to wield influence in America, consistently using intimidation to pursue its political aims without respect for fundamental human rights. Attacking on spiritual beliefs Furthermore, Norton highlighted in her query that, the CCP attacks Xinyun artists in the U.S. because they practice Falun Gong. Falun Gong is a spiritual practice with truthfulness, compassion, forbearance as the core principles. The practice has faced brutal persecution in China since 1999. Many Xinyun performers follow Falun Gong as a means of self-improvement. Before facing persecution by the CCP, Falun Gong had a wide following in China, with estimates suggesting that one in 13 people was a practitioner. Retired Brigadier General Robert Spaulding from the Hudson Institute stated, the CCP manipulates our media. A prime example is their campaign against Falun Gong, convincing much of the American academic landscape that it's a brainwashing cult. They've manipulated our media in similar ways to control the narrative. Spaulding described the Falun Gong community as merely people who have different opinions about the Chinese communist regime. In March, the Epic Times reported that New York Times journalists Michael Rothfeld and Nicole Hong had spent six months preparing an attacking piece on Xinyun. According to information received by the Epic Times, this article might serve the CCP's international campaign against Falun Gong. Chen Ying, vice president of Xinyun, said to the Epic Times, the New York Times is determined to undermine us, crafting stories based on highly questionable interviews. A March report from the Phelan Dafa Information Center mentioned that the New York Times ignored and downplayed the severe human rights abuses by the CCP against Phelan Gong. The report accused the Times of lacking journalistic integrity, endorsing the CCP's dehumanizing propaganda about Phelan Gong and promoting distorted debates that could endanger lives. 
not playing by the rules. Scott Erickson, former acting chief of staff at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, emphasized that the attacks on Xinjiang should serve as a wake-up call for America to remain alert. In an early April interview with NTD-TV, he described the CCP as extremely cunning and adept at identifying and exploiting America's weaknesses. Erickson remarked that they'll certainly exploit any vulnerability they find. He pointed out that the CCP is proactive in disseminating a broad spectrum of false and misleading information across the U.S., often setting the stage with negative portrayals of their adversaries and influencing public perception before their opponents can react. Such tactics by the CCP can be quite covert, such as ingraining their version of events in the minds of American government employees. He stated, it's important to understand that they will use every tool at their disposal to further their aims, without adhering to the usual rules of engagement. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.